Hey guys, Ronnie here from M5 Stack. In today's video, I would like to introduce you four new products from the M5 Stack family. Let's start. Now, the first product will be the watering unit. As we can see, it's a combined product of two in one. The first one, we have a soil moisture sensor, as we can see here. This is a capacitive soil moisture sensor, not a resistive one. Now, what does it mean? It means basically that it's a corrosion resistant. Corrosion resistant means we can put it into the plant and it won't get corroded so easily, which means a long shelf life and a long usage life. Now, if we take a look around here, we can see that the watering unit have four pins. The first one is output, output pin that we use for the analog signal output. The second one is an input pin that we use to turn on and off the pump, which we use to pump water. Then we have 5 volt and GND in order to control both modules together. As we can see, it's a Grove interface, so it's compatible with all the M5 stack family. Now, let's move to the second product. The second product is the GRBL, step motor unit. Now, what does GRBL mean? For those who don't know, GRBL is an open source framework that allows us to control CNC machines, 3D printer, and so on. It's very useful when we want to do something with step motors. Now, specifically, this motor allows us to control three step motor at a time. As we can see, it's three axes, X, Y, and Z. Over here, we can see that we can also control the limit of the step motor, and we have a DC input of 9 to 24 volt. Now, if we turn around the module and look inside into the PCB, we can find out that we have a dip switch right here. The dip switch allows us to control the micro steps as well as the I2C address of the module. As we can see here, we have three heat sinks. Every heat sinks protect every module of the step motor. When you use the step motor, usually it gets hot. By having the heat sink, we can protect it and prevent it from overheating. This is a stackable module. So, as we can see, for example, I have a Core 2 device right here. I can connect it fairly easily right here, just like that. When you connect it, just make sure to fit it just inside the pins so it will not damage them and will not break them, just like this. It's a stackable module, and the cool thing is that once we input the 12 volt or 9 to 24 volt DC, it will also power the unit, so we don't need to provide it external power as well. Now, once we understand about this unit, let's move to the second one, to the third one. Now, the first unit we will introduce is the DDS unit. Now, what does the DDS actually mean? If we turn around, we can see that DDS stands for Direct Digital Synthesis. Now, this Direct Digital Synthesis can actually generate different signal waves, different length. So, for example, here we can see four of them, sine, square, triangle, and sotus. We can generate it and use it for debugging. Different devices require different signals. And this unit is very useful for debugging and creating such signals by our need. As we can see, this unit have the growth board, which means we can use it for all our devices that are compatible with the M5 stack family. Over here, we connect it to our unit. It can be the core or stick C or anything else. And over here, we can connect it to our device that we need to generate the signal to. This will output the signal based on the signal that we create inside of the device. Now, after we understand how does it work, let's move to our final unit. Our final device will be the Atom Motion, as we can see here. It's an extension board for the M5 stack Atom device. As we can see, the Atom is right here, and we can disconnect it and take it apart. The Atom is a very small device, and it has some extension pins right here. But those are very small and require manual connection of, of jumper pins. This doesn't allow us the full capability of the Atom device. Now, in order to reach the full capability, we can connect it into this extension board and see what it includes and what can we do with it. First thing to mention, it's powered by the battery, as we can see the battery here, which allows us to track the state and also power it such as with a functionality such as a UPS. Over here we have an on-off switch that we can use to turn on and off the Atom Motion board. Over here we turn it on, we can see that the LED is blinking and it's on. Let's turn it off again to turn it off. Now right here, let's take a look over this part. We have servo pins. We have two servo, one and here, one, two. And for the other side, we also have another two, which means we can control total of four servos. 
Over here we have motor pins, as we can see, motor 2 and motor 1. We can control 4 servos and 2 motors. As well as, of course, we have the Grove ports, which is port C and port B right here. Now, this is amazing. We can basically control a lot, a lot of modules and a lot, a lot of sensors. So with the Atom itself, it doesn't look like much. It's actually a very powerful device that just requires a small extension in order to reach its full capabilities. Guys, this is all for today, and I hope you enjoy and watched our all products and will purchase them ASAP. We will see you next time.